right guys, today we're gonna bring a pretty cool video. Did you hear some motion in the background? That is because I came to the beach to shoot this video. So, it's a beautiful day. <clears throat> so back to this. So this is perhaps my favorite device uh, to add to an e-bike. And I know a lot of you are probably saying right now, well, this thing has a green screen, it's not color, like I would never put that on my bike. Well, sometimes things that work really well don't have to look cool, right? Uh, this is a ton of really cool features packed into a really small screen that can fit pretty much anywhere and offers everything that you need at the push of a button. So a lot of you guys are running controllers that can't be tuned, can be tuned, most of them can't be tuned in the fly. Most of them aren't easy to tune in the fly. And if you're riding your bike around, you just want something that works, right? Nobody likes to have a complicated e-bike. So what this device does is many things. So we'll start off with the basic home screen. Um, I've filmed videos about this before, but we'll just go over everything and, and start with scratch. So the first thing here is this is what's gonna be known as your home screen. You boot up the cycle analyst. This is the screen you're gonna see almost every single time. So at the top left, we have the battery voltage. At the bottom left, we have the current wattage going through the shunt. Uh, the cycle analyst either uses an external shunt or will tap into the internal shunt on a mid-drive if you have that. Uh, you just need to know the shunt resistance value. So in the top right corner, we have the temperature of the motor in degrees and Celsius. And that cycles through the current mileage on this trip. And on the bottom right, that's showing the actual mile an hour that we're currently going. So currently the bike's motor is at uh, 37 degrees. We've gone 1.45 miles. The pack's voltage is 77 and a half volts. So that's what we could see. And we've used 0.78 amp hours. So that's what we could see from the main screen. Now we're gonna cycle through the cycle analyst. So we're gonna press the right button one. Now we've done is we've traded speed for amperage, right? So we want to see now actually how many amps it's pulling, not just the, the wattage. So we want to see an amperage draw. Uh, so everything else is still the same data with now the addition of uh, amperage with the wattage. Awesome. Now we're going to scroll to the next screen. And then what we see here is that we have mile an hour, amperage, uh, watt hours, the voltage, and this is the cadence RPM. So uh, I'm not spinning them forward, so it's not going to pick it up. But if I was, it would start picking up how much I'm pedaling and uh, give us that RPM there so you could see your input RPM as well. Um, here is the watt, total watt hours that we've consumed. And then here is the watt hours per mile so we can figure out how efficient the bike is. Here, this is for pedaling. So again, I didn't really do a ton here, but this is the average RPM that I was pedaling. Um, and no watt hours were really gained by doing that. This is human watt hours, so I didn't do anything. Uh, regen, this is, oh, this is how much we've actually consumed of the battery, but as you can see, this is 0% regen. So on a mid-drive bike, since we use clutches, there is no regen. But if you had a bike with regen, this is where you would be able to see that data. Here is the amperage max, the amperage minimum, and the voltage minimum. So the reason it sees this minimum value here is just because the on-off throttle. So we've seen 70 amps and the voltage went all the way on the 63.8 volts. This is a really small battery pack and uh, it's been beat up on its whole life. So yes, it does have some voltage. So that tells you there. So if you, and this, this stores, you don't have to have the screen pulled up. So I was able to cycle through this data from my previous ride here. <clears throat> so this is all very useful data, right? Uh, the next one, my max speed, my average speed, how long I've actually been riding. So the max speed I see in this trip was 32.8. Uh, the average speed was 17.1. We went zero hours, five minutes and seven seconds. This is the temperature average, max, and the temperature now. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is the temperature average of the motor. This is the hottest I've gotten it, and this is what it's at currently.
This is total mileage on the cycle analyst since it's been installed or since it's had a hard reset. And this is the trip mileage since I've reset the battery data. So this is my current trip. This is the trip on the, uh, on the cycle analyst in total since the factory reset. This is the resistance of the battery. This is how many cycles it's had cycled through that total mileage and how many kilowatt hours it's consumed during that time. Again, this data isn't true for this bike, but this is just true since I've done a hard reset for the last video. Um, now we're here at another really, really cool screen. So this is throttle input and throttle output. Uh, and the reason this is really cool is because this is one of the amazing things that the cycle analyst can do is the throttle now goes in and out of the cycle analyst. So when you're actually providing throttle, the cycle analyst is what's providing the throttle, not the actual throttle itself. So I'm gonna back up here. And if you notice, as I give it throttle, the in increased along with the output, but at a different rate. So the reason is because I have these tuned now. So with this, you can actually calibrate any throttle to work with the controller's set or preset thr throttle setting. So if you have a controller that uses full throttle at say four volts and starts at 0.9, but your throttle doesn't match that, you may not be getting full throttle or you may be getting a jerky throttle or may not have full throttle range. So now you can actually program the throttle to be zero to five volts or to get its full spectrum and then translate that through the cycle analyst to be zero to three volts, zero to four volts, or whatever it needs to be to be correct, so that you can get a, a full usable range for the throttle. So that's what that's showing you there. It's showing you if there's any altercations happening, um, and that's showing you what it's actually using. Uh, that's showing you the voltage and amperage. And so that's where we're at. There. back to the main screen. So that's the basic screens that you could cycle through, all right? We went through all of them and we got all the way back. So these are really cool on the fly data that you can see. Some of these are really important, some of these are useful, and some of these you just can't get in any other way. So the next thing is that we have the power buttons here. We can turn the bike up or down. So you can see I'm changing the percent. This is tunable to many different things like power levels, profiles. Uh, I currently have it to pass assist. So this is how much pedal assist I'm gonna be able to achieve based upon my cadence RPM. Uh, that's how I have it set up. You can set it up many different ways. That's just how I do. So I'm gonna stop this part of the video, right? We're gonna consider this just the gauge side. I'm gonna stop the video and then now we'll get into the actual setup side. So display voltage, we can display it in voltage, we can display it in, let me show you. Average cell voltage, battery voltage. So that's pretty cool. You can see the average cell voltage, how it's breaking it down across the pack or the total battery voltage, which for me, that's what I want to see. Uh, battery, so you can configure batteries. So I have a set up to only have one battery, <laughs> but if you're cycling between two different batteries, you can actually keep track of the different batteries that you have. This is the battery chemistry, so you set this for what type of battery you have so you can get an accurate state of charge. This is the series string, so this is a 20 s battery at 72 volts, so that's how we get the 20 cells. This is the capacity, although this doesn't match the current battery, this is the one I most commonly use. This is, so you can set up a low voltage cutoff on the cycle analyst um, to protect your battery, or you can set it up on the controller. So if you don't have access to these parameters in your controller, you now have access to them on the cycle analyst so that you can have this type of custom tuning on any controller. So this is the low voltage gain. That might be a little bit confusing to some of you guys, but what this is, is how quickly the controller or the cycle analyst will roll back power because of the low voltage. So these are gains, how quickly it responds. So that's a tunable parameter. Now the battery setup. 
So the next setup was the throttle calibration menu that we've referenced. Um, so since we're in the setup menu now, we can actually go ahead and show you this. So now when you provide throttle in, you can calibrate the full usage. So when I press throttle in now, you're gonna see it's giving me throttle voltage all the way. So I'm able to see now that this throttle goes from 0.85 to 4.25. So the output of this battery, or excuse me, the output of this throttle is 0% to 99%. So the throttle has full working range. Now I could set this differently to achieve that by setting those settings, um, but they're already set. So we're, we're not gonna make this too We're not gonna make this too in depth in the video, but that's how you tune the throttle in. Now the next setup is the throttle out. So if you had a controller that only took one volt to three volts, you could now translate the voltage in to that voltage out to correspond to full working throttle range. So this is where this is really, really neat. It comes in nice. Empty. Um, speed limit. So you can actually program in different speed limits that will come into play based upon the speedometer. So if you wanted to set the bike up to only 30, it would limit it here and roll back power once you got to that, and that's tunable. Obviously. Uh, then you have power limits as well that you can set up and tune. So this is, uh, here I have it completely limited by the controller, but you could set up a 20 amp limit, a 30 amp limit, a 500 watt limit, and then cycle through that with the power switch and then you have different power. And then as well, this is probably the most sought after feature of the cycle analyst, is that you can add a, a pass device to any of the e-bikes, even if it doesn't have already a current uh, pass input. So by taking the pass input, um, so you can use any sensor, wire it in, that's what you see right uh, here. This would actually be the pedals moving, which they're not right now, so you won't see that. Oh, yeah, actually, there you go. So you can see the pedals are moving. They're moving backwards, that's why it doesn't pick up on it. But this takes a signal and then this will actually output it as a throttle signal. So it converts pass signal to a basic throttle signal, allowing it to work with any controller that has a throttle on. Uh, and that's fully tunable. So you can set up the power level, the power assist, how many poles it has, etc. So you can fully dial in your pass. Uh, this is the power config of the pass, so I have this set up uh, where it's 15% of the total power of the bike, and then it's set up to be able to cycle through that. Um, there's many custom tuning features for that. Again, we're just kind of going over the basics of what it can do. Um, this is how you set up the temp sensor, so you can calibrate different temp sensors, different thermistors, so that it works in conjunction with your specific temp sensor. Temp sensor. This is uh, an analog uh, setup where you can actually use to cycle through different power settings. Like I said, if you had a different button, you could set this up, or I believe you can even use this for the brake. This is where I have the power assist. So that's 100% of the assist level with 15% throttle. This is how you set up the e-brake. So it will actually control and handle the e-brakes and cut power for you for as well. This is where you set up the shunt. So this is a one mil ohm shunt. Uh, low impedance, or low power, excuse me. And this is where you have the setup presets. So like I was explaining, you could have low power, high power, and then you could flip through those. So. This is where you set up the home display and how it's what it's showing. Uh, 
here you set up the logging rate and uh, some other features. And again, that's a photo. Mileage, and then now we've left the setup. So really what this is, is a custom tuning device that allows throttle input, model, uh, throttle input that can be translated out to different things. It offers power control, it offers throttle control, it offers pedal assist features, <coughs> plus a whole slew of data logging features. So we can tune the bike, we can limit power, we can add power, we can tune the pass, we can monitor temperature, we can monitor speed, monitor anything from a shunt, whether it's a low power shunt or a high power shunt, all at your fingertips, making even a basic controller fully tunable on the fly. Um, if you don't have one of these, truthfully, you really need to look into it and, and not be thrown off because the display isn't as pretty as you would like. Um, really, this is one of those things that has a ton of features and who cares what it looks like because of what it offers is so much greater than, than the visual and you know, aesthetics of it. It's, it's really a useful toy and I really would love to see more people using this and taking advantage of it.